the planning, the preparation that goes into these shows, folks, if you only knew the hours of toil and the discussions uh, in, within the green room here between uh, Jason Parker, NBC6, Logan Robinson, Noel Game Day, of course, they're in the middle, and big game James Coleman, fifth quarter college football. Gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? We literally spent hours preparing today's show. You guys, you viewers don't understand the work that the four of us did to put together this show. I'm just going to say it, three words, Emmy-worthy show. I hope so, and then maybe bring sponsorships too. I do I actually, before we get into everything, I do actually want to give my first shout-out of the show. I got a couple coming to the show, but this one's especially for Logan. Shout out to Logan. This is actually a shout out to the Florida State basketball team for doing something that Mike Norvell couldn't do. Win at Louisville this week. So shout out to the to a Florida State team that can actually win in Louisville. So shout out to the boys, head coach Lauren Hamilton's team. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Nice, nice shout out to Leonard Hamilton. That's good for them. And for them. To, speaking of Louisville, shout out to uh to Lamar Jackson throwing a touchdown pass in the playoff game. It was to a Buffalo player, but still, shout out to him. Yeah. Give that man an extension. Yeah. It's called Loyalty 15. I'm like, I keep keeping a tote board of how many times Jason says shout out. We're at nine. <laughs> In this show alone, yeah, that's good. That's good. We are. Let's go. All right. Good. It's Florida State Seminoles Live. We're here 89 consecutive weeks with these three, and uh, we talk Florida State football. So leave your comments, your questions, your trash talk your debate topics, anything in the chat, I will monitor and uh, we'll talk it up. Of course, we want a sponsorship. So if you've got an idea, if you've got a contact to a sponsor, hit me up at Mark Rogers TV at Gmail and otherwise individual contributions are accepted, of course. All right, new Jersey numbers. I can't believe we're talking. This is where we're at. We're leading off we're talking. Guys, really, that's what we're leading off with? We're leading off with Jersey numbers. That was the first thing I heard, so that's what I went with. Folks, this is what happens when your team goes three and six. You have to lead off your offseason show with Jersey numbers. Hey, come on hey, now. Is there promise. any significance Carter. here with the Jersey numbers? Number five is a big one. Yeah, right? Brendan. Yeah, Gann. number five is the worst football player. She's James. <laughs> James, you really James, you can really this, James, you have to say the worst. They have they have they have good play tendencies. Dontavious Jackson isn't here anymore. That's true. He's saying. <laughs> Can anybody come up with the worst jersey number than six? Has there ever been a great number six in the NFL or in college football? I don't think there's ever been a good number six. Leroy Butler, Florida Greg State. Jones. No, Greg Jones was three. Greg Jones? No, he was six. Greg was six. Greg Jones was yeah. six? Greg Jones was six. Leroy Butler was number six. Bobby Brister was six. Bobby Brister, but no. was he three? Who? I don't think Greg Jones was six. Greg Jones was number six. Greg, three. Oh, Greg was six. Okay. We have very few. It's pretty much the worst number on the board. I don't know why. Why are you hitting on six? Is. Why are you hitting on six? They pay my pay. It just came to me that there uh, aren't great number sixes either in the NFL or in college football, just I for whatever think, reason. I think you're just hating on the number six. Shout out to NBC6. <laughs> now up to 10. Take that. Mark, are you using a different mic? today because i think it's hitting a different mic i don't know it's not hitting your usual one that you're holding right there it's not hitting your it's not like we didn't have a week to prepare for this guy well, maybe we have yet to select the proper mic maybe i hit a bit of a disconnect here maybe so, the so, selection didn't. so we talked about player transfers but obviously brendan gant switching from number 44 to number five yeah. james has given his two cents james why do you have beef with the number five <laughs> on defense well, one, one, um, none of the guys are really good. And outside of Greg, Greg Reed was good. Uh, my guy, um, name just escaped me for whatever reason. MMA champion or MMA fighter now. Uh, with the Northrop, like that, um, Northrop, Jacksonville kid, uh, Reggie Northrop. It's mm -hmm. uh, he, but but they came toward the end of his um FSU career with him being good. It just didn't live up to that expectation that I would have liked him to. Um, outside of that. I'm just trying to find guys. I mean, maybe no, Tony Carter was a five, but you know, Tony, I believe, you know, really excelled more in the NFL. Um, overachieved in the NFL. Uh, was a good, good player for State, but just was. But outside of that, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to remember a five that just, I just said, um, 
man, I want to wear number five. And um, now I'm looking at Gant, who I like because she was a bulldog. And he came downhill. The one really good redeeming quality that he has in coverage is in one of them. Even though he did the Jesus Loves Me interception against Duke, even though he was beat, um, is the fact that he hits. And there was a a, um, a lyric. I believe the song was on John um, by, by now pardoned um, um, Little Wayne, Dwayne Carter. Um, by President Trump, uh, he pardoned him, and he was like, four four bulldog, which is also the nickname of a gun. Um, my my M F and pet, I pointed at you. Basically, he, the thing is, is he, when he lines you up, he hits you. I liked it. I needed him to stay at four four, so I quote that lyric a few times that he made a play. Now he's going to five, and I believe that's going to subtract the amount of plays. Hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully there's nothing to that and, and he gets better, but I don't know. I'm terrified. I don't know what these guys are doing right now. Shout, shout out to Kodak Black for also they getting pardoned. Shout gave out. me my number, so it was just like it wasn't a question. <laughs> shout out to Kodak Black. Also getting pardoned. Appreciate that. Yeah, no, it feels like kind of just switching numbers just to switch them. I liked 44 with Gant. Um, I really, I honestly really liked uh, Hamza and 23, and then he switched to number five and really only got to see him just a few times play. But um, I think James's connection was kind of spurting in and out there for a second. It was kind of hard to hear. But, um, yeah, Gant moves from 44 to five. Uh, there's a few more. Some of the younger guys like McLean, uh, number – uh, he's gonna wear number eleven. I like that for him. I believe that's what he wore in high school. I don't know at IMG. Um, but yeah, there, there's it's it's now officially jersey number season. DJ Williams, running back, is gonna be wearing number one on offense, taking James Blackman's sacred number one. Um, rest in peace, that number one Blackman uh, jersey. But uh, yeah, DJ Williams is gonna take that number. Uh, I think there's a few. Uh, also, Jamie Robinson's taken number ten. Nah, Stanford Samuels, senior stumble. Yeah, old school. Another R.I.P. Kind of situation. You knocked the hell out of Roscoe Parrish. So I'll give him credit for that. Nadir Adam, or not Nadir Adam? He was number eleven. I'd like to point out that Logan's the one who brought up the number topic here, ladies and gentlemen. Logan Robinson, nogame.com. Hey, it gets likes, it gets shares. Yeah. That's sadly, I mean, that's what that's where we're in. Um, Mackenzie Milton's gonna wear his number 10 from yeah. what he wore at UCF, keeping the good luck going there. It'll be nice to see. Uh, what else did the football program release something that just said this is the complete roster, and then people noticed the number changes, or did they announce these are number changes? for this season. Literally it's the first week that we haven't had a whole bunch of transfers or anything like that. And this is literally where we're at. <laughs> People just jump yeah. in and they investigate. This is Florida state's fan base. If there's any kind of okay. uniform changes, jer anything to do with the jerseys, Florida state fans are on top of it. They like refresh the roster site every 30 seconds, but it's still showing that these Jersey numbers haven't been changed yet, but um, that's what I'm saying. They, they find it out before anybody else, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, that's practically the big names that are uh, highlighted. If you guys don't mind, uh, Dominic would like to join the show tonight. Come on in. Yeah. At this point, I mean, we uh, really can't do worse. So come on in, Dominic. Sure. Can't get any worse. We're talking about Jersey numbers, guys. Guys, we're talking about Jersey numbers. We're okay, fine. let's move on to the transfer Thank portal. Is that you. what we want to do? Okay, we're Thank done you. with the Jersey numbers. Hopefully they look good and play good in their new numbers. That's going to be a yeah. source of inspiration, maybe a little uh, synergy. Just hey, motivation. As motivation. As long as, they, as, long as, they as long as they win more than three games next season, that's the goal. That just win more than three games. That's all. But not necessarily the goal to win what? Six and six gets Norvell to nine. Then we've got a. Then we that show would provide a, a huge debate if we can get oh. six and six out of Norvell. Then we're looking at nine and twelve. Willie's number. Mm -hmm. Then wow. that's that's battle royale off the top. Yeah, that's of Jason versus Mark. <laughs> I'm getting popcorn. Everybody needs to get. Oh, ready. not necessarily oh. me. I don't have anything to do with no. it. No, I'm thinking you two. Oh, it's oh you us two. Logan, Jason versus uh, Logan. battle royale WrestleMania. It would end up, and then I think. Incoming Mark would have a say. I'll so jump a few in. Things. I'll have oh, my yeah. opinion. Sure. 
Marco, Marco, Marco watch the replay on YouTube and then he'll jump in with his two cents. It'll be fine. It'll be good. <laughs> yeah. And then James, then James will talk about a play in 2004 that it'll remind him of against Duke. <laughs> Harris has made some quick, like 12 field goals in that game to beat Duke. I remember that game. <laughs> this too much wants me to them to go six and six this year. I'd like um, them. To do, I'd like them to do better than six and six. But yeah, six and six is the goal. Five hundred season or better at this point. Jesus. So no. wait a minute. Okay. So so all right. <laughs> so if that's the case, we got rid of forty three players to get marginally like to get this much better with a bunch of one year mercenaries. Oh, like that. That doesn't make any sense. Why James. would you do that, James? On paper, I'm looking at the fact that our schedule next year. Just schedule alone. Notre Dame, Clemson, at Clemson, at Florida, Miami, at North Carolina. On paper, right there, that's five losses out the gate. That's that's right. on paper seven and five best record, and that's assuming that Florida State plays their best football. That's not assuming that we don't have another Georgia Tech hiccup game against a team like a Boston College or against you know a team like an NC State or Louisville. I mean, let's not forget we're playing Louisville, who spanked us by thirty-two points. NC State spanked us by 16 points. We didn't play Boston College, and Boston College was a bold eligible team. That's where we are right now. And that's assuming that we play our best football is an on paper seven and five. Now, do I, as a Florida State grad who is the, a diehard biased Florida State guy, do I think we're gonna go 12 and 0 in my in my in my heart? Yes, I think we're gonna go 12 and 0. In my head, we're gonna be damn lucky to be six and six at this point. Could things change? Absolutely. That's what I said. That Notre Dame game is going to be the most important. If we come out against Notre Dame and look decent and either win that game or lose by 10 points or less, I will have much more confidence at that point in the season. If we come out and get bum-rushed that first game, we're in trouble. The only thing that has kept this from being the toughest schedule in the country, and I always do scheduling analysis mm -hmm. during the offseason and compare the schedules, but this schedule is about as tough as it can possibly get. You're playing the two best teams in the other division. Mm -hmm. You, of course, play in the better of the two divisions, mm -hmm. and you face one of the top two or three teams in the country, plus non-conference Notre Dame and Florida. Mm -hmm. That is a rough schedule. You you look – Yeah, I, I agree with you on the, five, on the five. I'm with you on that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I just – I mean, I, again, if, if it is true and the talent on the roster – it's gotten that bad, and you haven't replaced it with all this with 43 mm -hmm. players leaving. Because the 43 of the 79 players that were originally here with Mike first took the job are now gone. So this is his roster for the most part. If you haven't improved it, then then you're 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 obviously taking a step back because there are, are eight winnable games on there. There should be eight winnable games. I can see those five, and you need some good things to happen. A ball could bounce the right way. You jump one North Carolina like you did last year. That that mm -hmm. can help you. Miami's a gift right now because um, the porn star with the teeth is coming back um, because King is hurt. Or actually, they're saying he might come back. He's right now definitely going to finish his first semester. But they could be starting at Jake Garcia. Um, at that's probably reasonably where they're going. And yeah. God bless the the trap yeah. if Van Dyke is starting. That would be even, that would be even more of a blessing. Oh. Gosh, that's the best thing that could happen for us because he's awful. Um, you know, Notre Dame is losing a lot. Matter of fact, I'll have Ian Book on my show Sports Day tomorrow. Um, he shared some very interesting things and takes on Florida State the two times that the two times he's played them. Uh, you know, so Notre Dame loses a good a good amount of things. Clemson returns a lot, and that's going to be a show like I'm with that. But. It's again, I can only I, I get what you're saying. My expectation can't go lower than eight because if it does, then it really just proves my point that we just made a we made a rash rush decision on a guy who's not a bad coach, he just wasn't ready for this level yet. And I have to believe if he's better, I have to believe if some of these guys, you know, the the, the spin, but it's good spin, it's positive spin. You know, War Chant released this um this chart with the amount of starts, the amount of yards, the amount of interceptions, the amount of tackles, the amount of sack that these these uh that a lot of these mercenaries are bringing in, and that's all improvement. But if it hasn't improved to the point where we can beat the Louisville's of the world, or we can beat the NC States of the world, and we can be you know can, can be confident about the Dukes and the Boston Colleges and the Wake Forest, 
then Jesus, we're on, we're, we're, we're really going downhill at a very fast pace. And, and we can't even look globally or, or nationwide when it comes to like how to get better and to really compete. If we can't beat those teams, because what I'm looking at, what, what Alabama's doing, there's only one other team, excuse me, there's only a few other teams outside of the SEC that can compete with that, and they don't have that team on the country. It's one of them. Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Texas are two. Oregon because of um, Uncle Phil. USC because of the, the foundation and the name recognition. If this is the case, this is what we are. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Um, worse than the glory days are not ahead of us, we might as well call a spade what a spade is. We might as well go ahead and just drop because it's not going to get any better. You're just going to lose money by trying to pretend to play with the big dog. So you can either have that expect that so I can't even have an expectation of six wins. My my standard is championships. My oh. expectation is eight. So if he can't make eight, then we got then then yeah. he got one more year. That that third year he's on the hot seat with me. And I like those guys. I hope to see him this weekend when I go to Tallahassee. But James, I, I'll tell him to his face. James, you and I were at, the, at Florida State at the same time. So we were in that era of that of, of anything less than the ACC, winning the ACC was a disappointment. So I agree with you. The expectation should be eight and four, nine or three or better. 100% agree with you on that. What I'm saying is right now with what we've seen at the end of last season, where we, we had the, where our, our biggest win at the end of the season was against Duke. That was, our, that was our highlight to end the year was a 56-35 win over Duke. Yeah, we scored 56 points. We also gave up 35 points to Duke. Looking at our schedule right now, and once again, we haven't gone through spring football yet. This is the way too early preview. But looking at our schedule right now, the only guaranteed wins I can say are Jacksonville State, UMass, and Syracuse. Those are the only three games right now that Florida State, without a doubt, are going to win next season. So that's three and nine right there. So that's the question. Does Florida State pull off, like you said, do they pull off an upset win over North Carolina? I, I know Miami's losing a lot of guys, and, and Dare King, depending on where that comes in the schedule, you know, he's injured to come back. Notre Dame does give up a lot of guys. Clemson loses a lot of guys. But the thing is, Clemson's backups could still have kicked Florida State's butt last season. Notre Dame's backups could probably still have beaten Florida State last season. So the question is, is this Florida State team going to be better than what we saw last year? If so, I have confidence, and I agree with you. Eight wins should be the expectation. But right now at this point, we've come in with our last two head coaches, with, with Willie Taggart in 2018 and with Mike Norvell in 2020, and said, listen, you know, you guys are going to do well. You're going to do better than the last guy. Everything's going to be fine, and we've been disappointed in both years. You have to come in with the realistic expectation. Right now the realistic expectation has to be Let's get to six and six, and then everything after that is a bonus. Again, that's my point. That sounds like that sounds like what. what um, so what you're saying is we might as well just go ahead and just accept the fact of what it is. It's a dead program, right now. Not yeah, that, that they, 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 accept they, that. But but if the team's as good as they were this year, or as bad as they are this year, then they they will go three and nine, as Jason just said. Those are the games that they're going to win if they if they don't improve at all. They're going to go three and nine. The schedule's that tough. If they're slightly improved, if they're not even slightly, let's say decidedly. I'm not going to say significantly, but I'm not going to say slightly. I'm going to say decidedly. Like everybody here could agree, this team was better in 2021 than they were in 2020. What do they do? Pick up two wins? Maybe they beat uh, Wake Forest and NC State or Louisville, and that's I, about it. I they, think I, you, just to finish my point, Jason, they would have to be then much better. They would have to go up a couple rungs in improvement then to beat that next level of teams on their schedule. I think they beat an NC State because that game will be in Tallahassee. I do think home field does play an advantage in a game like that. And then I think they will. I think James is right. I think they will get one of those, at least one of those upset wins. I think they'll beat a North Carolina. I think they'll beat a Notre Dame. Something like that. Yeah, so you've hit the nail on the head. That's five wins right there. You have to get one more win. Is it going to be a Wake Forest? Is it going to be going to a Boston College team that you needed a fourth quarter comeback to beat in 2019 when Odell Higgins was our interim coach? That's the question. Right now, Florida State has the name that they should be aiming for. Florida State has the tradition they should be aiming for. But that talent right now, 
Is that talent an eight and four talent on that roster, James? That's what I mean. That's what I, I don't know yet. Um, like I said, if um, so there are some of the transfers that I absolutely do not like. Um, I think they're great people, probably, mm-hmm. but I just don't think I just don't know. And, and they came from the SEC, <clears throat> but that's meaningful to me. If you were um, a kid at Arkansas, you probably never know. You've never known what it felt like to win an SEC game because you mm-hmm. you opted out this year. If you're the kid from the kid from um, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. I like him a little bit. I think it's Robinson. I like I like him a little bit. Um, I'm not a thousand percent sure. I do like the defensive end that came in. Um, and Milton, I don't know. If Milton's very if Milton's healthy, I mean he's saying he is, but if Milton's healthy, Milton is an upgrade, a potential upgrade at the quarterback position. But so I gotta go if I feel like these and I know you, Jason, so this isn't really geared to anybody here on this thing, but if a FSU fan is listening to this and you truly believe the hype mm-hmm. and you've bitten into the apple, you've bitten into you, you, you drinking the Kool-Aid, that all that we have tremendously gotten this roster, or as people love to say, that roster is flipped. What a flipped roster means isn't that he brought in all of his guys. A flipped roster means the roster turnover is not good. That's what a flat, flipped roster means. If the roster is flipped, then we should have talent that's good enough to be Boston College, Louisville. NC State, Syracuse, North Carolina, not excuse me, Syracuse, Wake Forest, and then obviously, if we can't beat the walking wall, if he loses the walk belt, he needs to tender his resignation that night. Like as soon as zero 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 hits, you need hmm. to you need to actually jump off the just top escort. of the stadium. Hmm. Like don't even just kill yourself. Yeah. But that should not happen. Um, but you know, those are the things again. It's just if Mike is a better X's and O's guys, which I still believe, even though it was bad. Um, if Fuller's now getting his pieces and he becomes a better DC, um, I don't know. But again, like I just, you know, I, I said eight wins. Well, anybody asking automatic player is going to probably always say, "What do you think, James? What do you need? What is their expectation? Eight wins, eight wins until 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 they have to go up." But I can see there's two definitely because if that's the case, we didn't beat Syracuse last time we played them. And Syracuse, though they lost a lot, is not a bad is not a bad coach team. They got some talent there. It's really only two wins on the on that on that schedule, and that's how you truly feel. Well, so we basically, mean, James, Jacksonville State. We can yeah. categorize their schedule three ways. The 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 teams that you just mentioned, whether that's two or three, as Jason pointed out, either two or three teams that they just trot out onto the field and beat. So that's either two or three. Then they've got the, the five that they would have to elevate their play significantly right. to beat. And then all those teams on their plane, Louisville, NC State, Wake Forest, et cetera, et cetera. So, James, for you to be satisfied, they need to beat, obviously, the, 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 the garbage on their schedule. They need to beat all the teams at their level, and they need to steal one against the big five for well, them to win eight. I'll, I'll give the bowl game as eight. So, I mean, you gotta, if, you, if you want oh, okay. that you got to play the ball. So okay. eight wins, figure out how to get Okay, it. seven and five um, winnable. That, that's my – so seven yeah. and five in a regular season is fine. I got to get – because if you can't beat those teams, then we're really, really far away. We're far away from even thinking about those five. Um, and North Carolina, as good as North Carolina really is, it's still – I don't know. He's still not showing something. But I, I like the quarterback, though. Sam Howell, that quarterback, money year for him. Um, I – I think they lost both both the running backs are in the draft who are amazing. Yeah. Ask a University of Miami fan about them. They might go top two rounds off of that film alone. And they got mm-hmm. to go on against us later in the game. But I def- Notre Dame, the tradition, no matter what, they're really, really good. Very- Brian Kelly's a really good coach, well coached. Florida, you know, they got a lot of stuff going in the background, what they do, but at the end of the day, they're very well coached and they're still they're still there. But it's a lot of um, controversy in their locker room um, at this juncture right now. Clemson, until the NCAA comes and breaks them up, they're Clemson um, it, for the ACC. I think they got a taste of getting close to that next level. But I think if you're going to get them, this is the time. But we're not there. So um, in Miami, I mean – I, Miami, though I respect the rivalry, I always respect the rivalry, but you know, they the Eric King is really what made them go. Um, and I just don't without him, without him being healthy, like to to think that he when he tore his ACL, to think that he'll be ready 
to go 100% by the first game or even by the by that time when we played them, which will probably be you know, the end of which is traditionally it'll probably be the fourth or fifth game. If I going back to that, so you're talking about probably the beginning of October at worst if they move it back to around holiday. Excuse me, around Halloween weekend. That's when it'll be. Like you're you're crazy. Like like you're 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 actually risking this kid's healthy this health this kid's health to come out here and win a game when he could just really just need to sit out. And we know he loves college, so just sit out and go ahead and get your tenth year in college. So that's really just just really mm-hmm. where it's at, man. I feel like I just want to beat. I just want to beat the guys that we're supposed to be, and then we'll figure out the other five later. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to be the negative Nancy here, but I feel like when when James says when he says, you know, we should beat the Louisville, we should beat the Boston College. I agree, we should. And then I watch us lose to Louisville by thirty two points last year. I think Miami. I think he's right. You know, if if, if Derek King doesn't play against us, does that help us out? Absolutely. Does Miami have a few guys that are leaving? Absolutely. Miami also beat us fifty two to ten. I'm I'm seeing what we had now, and I don't see us getting drastically better to the point where we can win more than three games at this point. Now, after the spring, once the schedule comes out later on this month, we can see where things fall out. And who knows at that point, you know, we know we open with Notre Dame. We know we play UMass. I believe it's the 23rd or 24th of October. You know, so there's a couple of 23rd. 23rd. Okay. Yeah. And then we play uh, Jacksonville state on the 11th. So we know there's a couple spots there, but for the most part, we don't know, how things are going to play out. So I think there's a lot of that stuff we have to go. Now, Logan thinks we're going to go 12-0 because he's a Florida State homer here. So, Logan, why do you think we're going to go undefeated? I don't think Florida State's going to go undefeated. Um, Maybe golf or tennis. I don't know. I haven't kept up with their tennis team lately. Um, But I think the spring's going to help a lot. There's a few transfers that – um, I'm interested to seeing with coaching on how they do and where they're going to fit. Jamie Robinson on safety – bringing in more depth there. I think he's going to be, uh, he's going to be implemented quite a bit. Uh, I'm not, I don't think Florida state's defensive staff really was, is too happy or didn't really like their DB unit. And that's why you're seeing some transfers come in. Uh, I think here Thomas is there to probably provide a lot of uh, playing time at the defensive end. And right off the side, he said it in his recent interview that he'll be playing over there to start off the bat. He can also play on the inside too. So I think that's a smart um, move their addition, but I think Mackenzie Melton is going to be um, the game changer more in the more on the locker room with maturity than anything. Um, listening to his interviews lately across national media and to us that we got to listen to, um, I believe earlier this week or whenever it was, he's tired of talking about his inter, uh, injury. He's tired of it. He, he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. That's what I get from it. He's ready to just be out there on the field. He said that. He's about 90% right now. He's running the same speed. His arm is better than he's – his arm is the best that he's ever had right now. Um, there's no doubt that he'll be a starter against Notre Dame um, day one, and I think Jordan Travis is going to have a lot of packages. I think there's I think there's a lot of positives to look at on these on a few of these transfers. Some of them don't make too much sense to me, like the UCF transfer DB, but um, I think Milton had some say-so on that one, little package deal, dealio. Um, but like I said, I don't really think Florida State's defensive staff is too happy with their DB unit. Um, I think Demory Tate's going to end up being a starting cornerback uh, opposite of Miko Dotson if Brownlee can't is not a um, going to fit there. I think there's going to be a lot of changes, and the spring is going to help a ton with that, and that's going to help where you beat these teams that you should be beating. Uh, well, I do have these one question. I'm not trying to start World War III. We joked back and forth, obviously, about the offensive line. But on a serious note, we talk about yeah. you know, with the because you know, let's call it what it was. That injury was horrifying that he suffered at UCF. Yeah. Do you think legitimately right now, Florida State has an offensive line that can can, can keep him healthy? Because I do believe I agree with you. I think he will be the starter when we play Notre Dame in the opener. Can mm-hmm. the offensive line keep him healthy? I. I- you know, well, I know you didn't agree with me for the majority of the season last year, but just looking at two years before that and the year before in 2019, 2018, I mean, it was atrocious. This last year, though, you were seeing some great signs of improvement, definitely for pass protection. There was a lot of times where Jordan Travis would have so much time but just wasn't able to make the reads. There would be Keyshawn Helton wide open down the field. Terry Wilson would be throwing his hands up while he's wide open down a post route um, and just couldn't find him. Um, Mackenzie Milton 
is a veteran. He's like an, he's, he's a veteran. He, he's going to be able to make his reads. Um, he did that during practically almost his Heisman year until he got injured that he was on. He's a guy that is smart in the film room and he's just a good passer. I think that's going to help a lot with their uh, passing game and Florida state's offensive line. You bring back Dante Lucas, who, if he gets his head straight, he's talented enough to do what he needs to do. Uh, Maurice Smith has been a great surprise there at center baby on Johnson and tends to coming back for uh, depth reasons. Um, and then you also got Robert Scott and Darius Washington. And these are guys that have played together before they've worked in sync. So you are bringing these guys all back under coach Atkins, who I'm really excited and was very happy um, to watch and prove this unit. Um, it's still going to take a few more years, but we're seeing improvement and that's, that's all you need. That's all you would like to see as a Florida state fan of the offensive line. You, you babbled on for two minutes on a yes or no question. I just want to throw that out there. Hey, I I'm just trying to be like you. It was solid, but well, we're trying to be like James. Let's be honest. James, that James, is true. I'm trying James to get on James. James. I got to go a little bit. I got to go a little bit longer. There we go. We got to go on and on. But this, you've reached the halfway point. I have no segue. Just go for it. Just do it. You know what we do. Oh, it's 638? Yeah, it's, it's this I didn't even know it was 638. Wow. 31 minutes into the show. You know what we do at the halfway point. S just smack the like button. I mean, I don't know what else more to tell these people. 50 viewers. I mean, only 18 likes. If you like the but if you like the video that you're watching right now, either if it's past the live one or live right now, we would definitely appreciate if you smack that like button and the subscription button. Maybe if you be notified. And there, in that bell, there's a bell I'm looking at right now, and I've got mine on. If you hit that bell, you'll be notified every time. Maybe We're about we three talk, weeks away from twenty five thousand. Maybe if we talk more about jersey numbers. That's right. More jersey that. numbers might get right. the channel to twenty five thousand followers. James. I'm going to I'm going to give all three of you guys hope. This oh, is God. what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you hope in terms of looking at metrics and history, the possibilities here. So I was surprised to uncover this figure. Because I think most college football fans have it stuck in our heads, and rightfully so, that things don't change in college football. Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson are going to be in the playoff, and maybe Oklahoma and Georgia or something like that. They're at the top, and then there's a bunch of good teams that always stay good teams but never reach the elite. They haven't. Notre Dame, Florida, on and on and on. That tier, Penn State, Notre Dame, et cetera. Then, you know, and then there, there's this hierarchy that never changes. But I started to look at this a couple of years ago and I went season by season by season by season. Okay, we got 64 teams in the Power Five, add a few independents that you could consider, of course, Notre Dame being at the lead of that pack. So you got roughly 65 to 70 Power Five teams. How many do you, because this number shocked me, how many of those teams from year to year do you think either increase their win total or decrease their win total by at least three, which is significant to go from three and nine to six and six, or from nine and three to six and six, six significant. How many, how many would you think on average out of 65 teams in college football? 10. That make a huge Five. flip. I would say, I would say like six or seven. Yeah. Around there. Something like that. That's that's where I was. That's what I figured too. I did three consecutive years. All three years, it was between 19 and 23 teams either increased or decreased their win total by three. Oh, At so least. Wrong. I was shocked. Wow. Here, no, you know what? It I'm, can happen. I'm going to give the positive. Here's some good. Here you go. I'm going to give the positive. This is for James and Logan. This is <laughs> the Here's the positiveness. The last time Florida State had a losing record in three consecutive seasons was from – it was a four-season period from 1973 to 1976. The year after that, 1977, they went 10-2. and two. Mm. We're going 10-2 and two this year, boys, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. No, no, but, okay. But here's, here's, here's something <laughs> interesting. We're not going 10-2. Florida State has – this is from – I'm going to give proper credit. This is a David Hill joint. Um, at a David Hell joint, um, excellent um, writer, stats guy. Um, my friends continue to share this thing. One thing that's very depressing, um, I guess the top like, power five wins that FSU has had over the last, like, or in the ACC that they've had over the last three years of Florida State is dead last, I believe, or tied with Georgia Tech. Um, but this is Florida State 
from a, and this is to keep up with the inauguration. So this is to make it just again. These are just the numbers. You can't just just how it works. Like you said, it's cyclical. Uh, I think she was twenty one and twenty five under this last administration. They don't fare as well under Republicans as we do Democrats. We won three national championships. Uh, two were under Clinton, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. and one was under Obama. Uh, we 88 and 10 under Clinton, under Clinton, 85 and 23 under Obama. We don't get anywhere close to those wins when it's, uh, when, when it's with others. I don't know if, what's going on with that. I don't know, you know, what happened. Um, maybe if you add Reagan and W, um, and HW, you get that. But like under W Bush, which is my one of my favorite presidents, we only won 67 games for 67 and 36. Yeah, and it's just um so there that, that could be some hope, random hope, but who knows? How far did we um, take that why it back. How far did you go Carter. back on that? Or to Carter. Carter. Carter was so, so basically Bobby Bowden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby yeah. Bowden and Carter kind of go together, right? About 76, 77, right, Jason? 70, yeah, 70, 70, 70, yeah. 70, well, 76 was his first year, that would be under four. 77, probably 79, 80 were the years they went to the Orange Bowl and back to back seasons. Hmm. No. Listen, what James so is saying. 212, 212 and 41 under Democrats, 187 and 93 under Republicans. Translation, Those you're welcome. Numbers. Translation, you're welcome, America. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but I just need hope. It's very okay. boring. It's very hard to do in my job. Urban Meyer's giving me hope, so I need Florida State to, you know, give me hope, too. Uh, at, the, at this point, that's called desperation. It's what we are. And I say that. <laughs> we're just desperate right now at this point. This is what happens when you go three and six. We are just a, we are a desperate football team at this point. Well, oh. the closer we get to spring practice, the more I'm going to be counting on all of you to prep spring practice for us and go over the positional units and really lock it down. All right. Hey, Ronan Jones, apparently, thank you for your 10, 10 euros that you gave to us. By the way, you guys got spanked by North Carolina and Oklahoma State to end your season. But it's all about the U, right? Okay, cool. Good job, Ron. Man, Ron's a big guy, man. I like Ron. Well, did you get him his uh his Leon Searcy stuff? Man, I'm trying to figure out how to. I can't. I can barely mail stuff in the states. It's, it's yeah. hard to mail stuff. To, um, he's in Ireland. He got me the address. Well, we got also. I'm trying to work it out. Yeah, no, it I think is tough. DHL does it. Ronan, Ronan, when everything clears and you come here, James has got you. He will hook you up. <laughs> I mean, I got the book. I got the Leon Searcy book signed. I've got three cigars from him, of Leon Searcy cigars. So I have the products. I just got to get it to him. I'm not reading that book. I don't like reading. I stopped reading when I got my degree. <laughs> yeah. Jason, you did the conversion rate for us, the 10, the 10 euros. Thirteen It's like $13 and change or something. Yeah. So thank you, Ronan, for your $13 and change in, in American currency, $10 a euro. We appreciate it. Your team, your rooting interest sucks, but we appreciate your money. Thank you very much. Ronan's typical um, opening line, support Mark Rogers, not FSU. Apparently, you guys are going 10-2 and two next year. No or 9-3 and three if you stay with my metric. Or maybe going 0-12. Oh See, Ronan, uh, that would Ronan, suck. But just in case you don't, maybe this will help you buy out Willie Taggart. Oh, Mike Taggart. Mike Taggart. Yes. Ronan, Ronan, okay. Ronan, Ronan's a typical Canes fan. They're too busy living in the past to actually listen to what's going on right now. He's probably watching YouTube clips of the 91 National Championship game. He's probably doing stuff like that. So he can't actually listen to the fact that nobody said we're going 10-2. and two. Dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Not to Ronan. Oh, hey. I love, Ronan. I love Ronan. Shout out to the fellow Ginger. I appreciate it, but you're being a dumbass. The- Ronan said 10 and 2. Logan said 12 and 0. My guess on January 20th would be 5 and 7. I legitimately think that we have a – Yes, the schedule is difficult. If we're saying right now, January 20th, as we film this, you have to give a prediction. It's a difficult schedule. I think we do have some of our tougher games are at home. I think that helps us. I'm going to be the objective fan and say six and six at this point because I can't go better than that because I can't get my hopes up to be let down. (laughs) I can't. I've been jilted before. Ronan said that he's watching the – 52 to 10 replay this. Yeah, season. I was there. Hold on. Where's my credential from that one here? No. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. No, I think I threw that credential away. Never Jason, mind. You're going to have to get a larger uh, house there if you're going to continue to 
collect credentials. I used to have them saved up each year, like all the credentials, like Super Bowls and whatnot. And then I got married, and, and in hindsight, I should have kept the credentials enough. <laughs> yeah. You can some, like some, of the are pretty cool. What's up? some of the credentials Some of the credentials are actually pretty legit. They're like dope. They're like this laminated very well. Okay. Yeah, you can like somebody else for a statement that. Cheap, cheap ass orange pole one that they have for us. Um, well, this, here's a, here's a good yeah, my one. My NFL, my my combine one is still like I like to just wear that. Sometimes people can only now my practice when I go to practice the credential. Have you ever got one of those? Like, oh, uh, anyways, the practice thing that they give that they give me oh, yeah. is like pretty legit. Um, at, for FSU, but the problem is like a game one was like a sheet of paper, like that they gave me. It just. It was just really. I was like, man, this quality is not really. I can talk about them now because I'm never going to get another one. So like, yeah. the quality the, just wasn't. The, the one they gave us for the high school championship was better than the Orange Bowl this year. This is just a little paper one. This is nice. Uh, well, sweet. you're around. You're around kids, so they need to make sure you're you're okay. Like they give you something yeah, free. And how come I got a point? Well, I mean, okay. Well, hey, listen. I don't know. I was I was trying to give you. I was trying to I appreciate, say, no, I appreciate the love, man. But, uh, <laughs> All right. Our man, DeAndre, BTPO Football Funk, actually has two questions plus okay. the Super Chat. DeAndre, we always love the questions and always the Super Chats and the contribution from you. So earlier he had asked about the greatest Florida State quarterback of all time. He's also asking about the greatest Florida State team of all time, Jason. Mm. I mean, I think by default the greatest team would be 2013 because the 14, you know, 14 0, the stats, the way they dominated. You know, I, I think 99 was a good team. They played a kind of a weaker schedule out of the group. And I think 93 you have to take away because of the um, of the loss, the loss to Notre Dame on November 13th. An underrated team, I have to say, is the 1980 team. The 1980 team went 10 and 2, and both losses were by one point. 10-9 to, to Miami and 18-17 to, to Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl. I remember them well. That I was not born yet. None of us were born, but tell us about that, Mark. How were those games? I was around. <laughs> Back then, when you when I first saw that Florida State was playing in the Orange Bowl against Oklahoma, then, of course, as you just mentioned, Jason, two consecutive years, that was like mm -hmm. when he showed up to play Nebraska. People that weren't totally invested in college football like the whole season were like, What's Miami doing in an – who are they? The same thing with Florida State. Like, oh, yeah. Florida, where did they come from? Florida State's in an Orange Bowl. Like, we didn't even know they had a football program. Like, mm -hmm. it was it was, it was, was a shock to college football nation at that point. And that, that was a team that was – I believe they were number three heading into that Orange Bowl. And if they had won the Orange Bowl, legitimate argument could have been made for a split national title year. So I think that's an underrated team. Best team of all time is probably the 2013 team. And, you know, we've talked about why it's the greatest team in college football history. So it has to be the greatest team in FSU history. Yeah. James? I wasn't Quarter there. Too. Quarterback as well. Quarterback as well. Oh, oh quarterback? Uh, I don't think it's Jameis because I think Jameis had a great season in 2013. He had a great season in 2013. His numbers in 2014 did take a little bit of a slide. So if you're going to say the greatest quarterback season, I'd probably say Jameis. Greatest quarterback? For sheer numbers, probably Chris Wingy. James? Um, I, I give Jameis the greatest quarterback. Um, and here's the reason why. Um, Winky had Ron Dugans, Lavernius Coles, mm -hmm. Peter Ward, Snoop Minnis, and Quan Bolden at one um yeah, because he was there on ninety nine, he's a freshman. Yeah. Um, shoot, I'm trying. No, I'm missing. Atrus Bell was there. Atrus Bell. That's six. Um, I know I'm missing somebody. Yeah, they had to have had more. Right. Anyway, I count six NFL receivers. Um, Jameis has had two. Uh, one, um, what it, it wasn't very good. Actually, neither one of them made it past the first contract. So that's the reason why i'll give james that yes we know about them and we talk about those guys mm -hmm. hopefully our kids will remember them very well and very fondly when they come back but they just weren't really really good outside of um their college days which is okay i mean i, I can attest to that that's me as well um i say the best team though was the 99 team and here's the reason why the reason why is because they were they went wired the first team 
Uh, maybe the only team. No, Alabama wasn't ranked number one when they started the season, where that Clemson should have been, I believe. But either way, regardless, they were the first team to be ranked number one in the beginning of the season and never lose that number one ranking. They went wire wire, um, ranked number one. That is very difficult to do. Every week, the, there's a target on your back. The 13 mm-hmm. team did not fit, did not start that as highly ranked. There was a lot of, because you had Jameis, and people knew about him, but they weren't sure because you lost EJ Manuel, um, and you, you, you lost some cats. So that's the reason why I'll give, and, then, and that 99 defense, both defenses were, were really, really good, um, seriously talented, but that's the only reason I say 99. Um, and, you know, some of those, I, I would say that 92 team was supposed to be pretty good right? with Marvin Jones. If I remember correctly, 91, one of those years they lost, they, they just lost one game and then, or it ended up being two, excuse me, I believe. But it just, it, that's the thing that sucks about Bobby. I was just talking to somebody about Bobby. Hold on, hold on. Oh, God. Hold on. What drugs to, do they have in there? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I have to. I apologize. Wait, James, I apologize said not even top two. Okay, first of all, Ronan, Ronan, we appreciate your money, but now you're just. You got to head out. Ronan, no, no, out. let's give Ronan a chance. Let's give him a chance to defend himself. Yeah. Ronan. Please give me your top 10 teams of all time. Let's listen to his top 10. Please list them in the chat. And I swear to God, if you list all 10 Miami teams, uh, you will be kicked out. We will ban you from this. We will figure out a way to ban. Who's going to ban who? We will figure out a way to ban Ronan. If he lists 10 Miami teams. Again, who is going to ban Ronan? We will figure out a way. You won't be here one week and we'll figure out a way to ban him. But Ronan, in the chat, go ahead and put down your 10 teams. And then we'll go up there. James, I guess my one beef with the 99 team is the fact that that's the 99 team who barely beat Georgia Tech, a, a decent Georgia Tech team, Joe Hamilton, the quarterback. Thank you. Barely, Thank you. Barely, yeah, barely beat Clemson, 17-14. Uh, you know, there were a lot of those. Close- but, but why? Why, why, why did they barely beat Clemson? Go ahead. F- flesh it out. But Woodrow answer? Well, flesh it out. What, no, Woodrow that's Dancer. not why. Just, just think about what happened in 99. That was oh. very that was very traumatic to Florida yeah. State. And Peter Warwick was back for that game. He missed the Wake Forest game in the Miami game. He was back for that Clemson game. What I'm saying, he missed a couple, he missed a significant time and then came back. It's just like, I mean, those are the things like so that's the other part. So they they got they got it wasn't just Peter Ward being kicked off. A second round draft pick got kicked off as well. But running his you lost like you lost firepower and you still went through everything. That's what that that's my that, that's the that's the the key. Now the now in twenty thirteen did have to face some controversy, but that was some controversy that was dug up by Bud. But if Bud wouldn't have, wouldn't have gone to search the damn police records and see that James possibly or somebody leaked something to him, I, I'm not criticizing. That was a great you know it was good. He rode his way up to that with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Jameis story kind of making the headlines and really getting out there and doing stuff. That was a lot. I give Jameis a lot of props at, at 18 years old, really dealing with that and navigating all of that. That's a ton of, well, excuse me, 19, because he was um he was a redshirt freshman. That's a lot to have to deal with. Um, And one thing I always tell people, and this is, I know you're going to troll no matter what, but trust and believe. Um, I know that pro- that prosecutor. If that prosecutor can get you on anything, he ain't dropping the case. Mm-hmm. Um, Travis Johnson, teammate of mine, um, got put in a similar situation with a female shot putter. Um, I won't share it. Actually, yeah, uh, charity name. Because the thing is, the crappy part is that they'll they won't list the the victim, but they'll list the guy even when they're exonerated. But she was two. She was two twenty. Not fat at all. Just Jack. She was a thrower. Listed more than me at that point in my life. And Travis was coming off of a of a, a major shoulder surgery. So and she said that he pinned her down and and you know did things. But the thing is if anybody's ever had a major shoulder surgery, you know, all you gotta do is tap that shoulder. And I've had it, had one. Tap that shoulder, we're down crying. Doesn't matter what that, that and then, if you're, <laughs> then on top of that, you're too you're you're a, you're an all ACC shot put thrower. You're not like some dainty person. So you know, regardless, of whatever that happened, that guy took it all the way to trial. Travis missed an entire spring, missed all these things. I remember when he got when when they um dropped the not dropped the charges when he when he got found not guilty. Odell ran out of the the, the meeting room and just he screamed yes, and everybody was like, "What the hell is going on?" And then 
Trap came back and obviously had a really, really good year that year. So, I mean, that's just, you know, those are, that's the reason why. I mean, those are the thing is you got two teams that you can't consider top 10 for nothing else because they've done something that no matter how good teams are, it's very rare. You went undefeated in college football. So no matter what you say. Logan, before, before we get to your prediction, has Ronan named his top teams yet or not? No, I think he'll be doing that. He's oh, just yeah. a troll. Toss the top. Okay, watch, watch. okay, Logan, who is your team? Right. I'm probably I'm the number one person here, the youngest. I don't have a lot of credibility and all that kind of stuff. I only got to see one of them. I was alive for one of them, or for both, for two of them, but one I got to see actually in person. I was only two years old when the 99 one happened, but um, I was very close inside. That's when me and Trey were uh, our closest Jimbo son. And I was able to be interactive inside and, and see what was really going on. And then just that 2013 team was nuts. It's uh, anybody saying that they're, they're not even an argument for a, a top five team, I think is, is uh, silliness. I mean, even, you know, you look at what LSU did in 2019, uh, was most certainly impressive, you know, beating these good teams here and there. But Florida State, whenever they faced anybody, I mean, they absolutely annihilated them. It wasn't really even close. And I think just the the mental game that Florida State and Jimbo set on them then was something that I don't know how if we'll ever see that again. You got to hope for it, but I don't think that will, I don't think might not ever see it again. Um, talking to like being so close with Carlos and having him on our pod, man. I mean, those those cats. We're, we're ready to go face NFL teams. They, I mean, they that's just how it was. They had true leaders. Timmy Jernigan, I mean, just absolutely just not not even fair. Uh, Kellen Benjamin was in his bag that year. Uh, I mean, we could just talk about all the talent they had. It just wasn't even close in a lot of ways. Um, Quarterback-wise, once again, uh, I got to see him in person. Didn't get to see the others, but uh, – Got to be Jameis. I think, like Jason or James said, the biggest part going through all that he had to go through in that season and still annihilate teams like it was nothing. And then you see him perform whenever he actually had to go through adversity, and he does that across the country on national television for Florida State to win their third national championship on a beautiful drive down the field like that and work it like a piece of art. Most certainly, I think, uh, is uh, national champion caliber the best so let's, let's recap in 2013 we also had a great defense top five defense in the country a three-headed monster running back once carlos williams came over and played running back but it was all james right it wasn't all james Rashad, Rashad wasn't green, all. i'm sorry rashad green did, did none of the work kelvin Benjamin did none of the work oh no they they, they did they had Phenomenal work. I'm just saying, though, what Jameis had went through at, at that young age, too. I mean, mm-hmm. he probably – I think he could have started. He could have most certainly started. Here's the thing about Jameis. Jameis' first game, he did not – a ball that he threw did not hit the ground. He threw 20 which is the receiver's fault. One on they your boy Rashad. They just couldn't One get, on your boy Rashad. They couldn't just get, like, like, there's never been – like, there, that, that, that doesn't happen. Like, like the, let's just, like – even on the road, old heads who played at Pitt with a guy right now who's cons- who, who may be considered when it's all said and done the best D tackle to ever play with Aaron Donald breathing down his neck at, 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 at 18, I think. No, 19, 19 because he turned 20 because he drank the soda pop at the Heisman at the Heisman um, presentation. <sighs> but I mean, those are just the things that I mean, it's it's tough when, especially at Florida State, it's tough when you say who's the best. Because I argue with people all the time. I like Deion Sanders. Well, I like Deion Sanders as a player. Um, don't care for Deion Sanders as a person too much, but I love Deion Sanders as a player. But I don't think he's the best DB to ever play, the best corner to play the player for the state. Who do you think it is? Who do you think it is? Um, yeah, not just said it. Not, okay. not, not, not just um, um, uh, T-Buck. Buck. T-Buck. Buck. T-Buck. T-Buck, statistically, in every, in every aspect, he is better than me. Just saying, and he had follow him up. I don't disagree with you. I, I think he's probably so, I mean, better those than those are just the only things. Those are the Wait. I mean, but a lot of people love Dion. Mm-hmm. What is um? Sorry, I was just going to say before we get off too. We said we're going to. There's two spots left in the transfer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, yeah, one more note on the uh, ten greatest football teams of all time, or where Florida State places. Uh, 
ESPN, 150 greatest teams, 150 years. They've got the 1999 Florida State team at number 12. And they have the 2013 Florida State team. The 2013 Florida State team. I'm at 23. Uh, number 29. Bleacher Report released the top 10 of all time, and they don't have Florida State from 2013 in their top 10. Because their, argument, their argument's going to be that we played a weaker ACC. Well, I'm sorry, we played a ranked Maryland, a ranked Miami, which was a top 10 game, a ranked Clemson, which was a top, mm. four, a top five game. I mean, sure, it, it was a bad schedule. There's no question it was a pretty weak schedule. The, the, the only comment that I will make, and I'm not going to go through those rankings in terms of – either legitimizing them or not, because anytime I rank something, I do a thorough job or at least attempt to. So I'm not going to just go crazy and say it's it's good. It's not. It was a, it was by a lot of measurements, as Jason has pointed out recently, the most dominant team in the history of college football by a lot of measurements that I think are, are legit. Uh, the only thing I'll say is, and this is by no fault of Florida State, they played a for a conference championship game opponent, a fairly weak opponent in Duke and their national championship game opponent, I don't think was weak, but it wasn't one of the stronger ones you will see as Auburn needed a miracle to beat Georgia and Alabama that year. I'll say this real quick. Um, 2001 Miami team is regarded as one of the best national championship teams with a lot. <sighs> name me the Big East. Na- name me the na- name me the Big East teams that year. Oh, that year. Oh, well, let's do this real quick. So the Big East that year was Virginia. No, you, don't Tech. Have to do it. you don't even have to do it. It's, it's a now defunct conference that tells you exactly oh. how talented we were. My point is, is that it's it's a pick and choose thing. I don't know. I can't even with the one fifty. I don't count. And this is my bias. I don't count football out before nineteen seventy. It, it it just doesn't count. Like it yeah, just, and, it's, and that's it's, the it, point. Yeah, and, and and I was going to put that as a precursor, a disclaimer that yeah, they're they're going just based on metrics, considering that 1930 is the same as 2020, and that's not the case, obviously. And they're just using everything as even playing field. We're going to rank dominance, basically. Well, and and just real quick, I'm sorry, you're up there, Miami that season. Everyone talks, and Miami fans, especially living down here, when they talk about why 2001 Miami is the greatest team of all time. The argument they make and the same argument they use is because all these players who got drafted into the NFL. Oh, the NFL was stacked with players from who played on that 2001 team. That's 100% accurate. But look at that 2001 team. That's a 2001 team that, like like James said, the Big East that year was Rutgers, Temple. I think Boston College was 3-8 and eight that season. I'm not 100% sure, but I know they had a losing record that season. You had a pit in the Big East but, that year. Which, they, um, which Boston College they – they needed a miracle. They needed a right. pick six from Ed Reed to beat them. You needed a fourth quarter touchdown to beat Virginia Tech, and then that's a Virginia Tech team that Florida State smoked in the Gator Bowl that year over in Jacksonville. So, yes, Miami was a great team in sending those players to the NFL. If you're going to say the greatest college football team when it comes to sending talent to the NFL, absolutely, 2001 Miami without a shadow of a doubt. If you're talking about the greatest team during a season, 2001 Miami is a top three team. I'll give them top three stats-wise, but there's no way. 2013 Florida State, and this will piss off Ronan and all the other people who who never stepped foot on the campus of the University of Miami. <laughs> 2013 Florida State beats 2001 Miami. Book it. Book Look, it up. Go ahead. Right down. Florida State beat ranked Maryland 63 to zero, and Maryland. Uh, they were saying Maryland was going to upset Florida State. I don't know that. if we if we looked up Maryland that year. I, I I'm going to guarantee that they didn't finish ranked. <laughs> I don't know if that was legitimate ranking. Uh, I think Jameis Jameis kind of and the defense went. <laughs> That's I haven't Maryland hasn't been back since. And, and who, who were my, Miami played five ranked teams that season. Three of them were non conference. Nebraska in the Rose Bowl. Florida State, and Washington. And to be fair, I was knocking Auburn to a certain extent. Really, I'm not knocking Auburn. Auburn was really good. I'm just saying they had two miracle wins to get to the championship game. But Miami played one of the weaker uh, teams that you will ever see in a national championship game in 01. That Nebraska team did not belong in that game, shouldn't have been in the game, was clearly inferior. Yeah. And then they got their payback the next season when Ohio State beat them for the national title. 
you've got TFJ Boxing. Thank you so much for the contribution. TFJ Boxing, nothing to say, but a tremendously generous uh, contribution. Thank you so much for that. Appreciate that. The Fight Journal? Is that what that's called? Could be. Shout out. Hey, we're officially in overtime here, guys. How the hell did we talk for an hour? Well, we got on just about an hour ago. We got on. We were late, seven oh six oh eight. You know, there's do is go historic, and then the debate's going to start. Logan, you know, there's a counter at the top that tells us how long we've been on. I know, right? I was just looking at that, and I was right on. I was right close to it. Seven, seven and six, Mark. That Maryland team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they weren't bad. I'm not saying that they were off. They were four and zero. Oh. They were four and zero oh when they came that's, into the game against hey, Florida State. And like I just told you, they went for the rest of their season. Hey. Jameis said. Well, bye bye, Timmy Jernigan. Ten. Timmy Jernigan after annihilating that kid. Was oh God! Here, here comes here comes. Yeah. The, Doing the Big Ten basically couldn't win a game after that. Here they comes against, I didn't the, the Cavaliers by one. Big Ten. Look at Maryland's record in the Big Ten. Yeah, that was a foolish mistake on their part. I don't know why they did that. Logan, Logan, it was a foolish mistake by the Big Ten as well. Here, yes. Logan. Let's ask Logan a serious question. It worked either way. How bad would Logan's man crush Timmy Jernigan? How bad would he smoke? Ken Dorsey, if they played in the game, like how bad? Like, would he just he just annihilate him? What do you think? It'd be manslaughter, and Timmy yeah. Jernigan would have to. I mean, he's already rapping, great, great music artist right now. And if you haven't listened to his tapes this last offseason, you're missing out. But uh, manslaughter. Your 13 team had a much better player at quarterback than the O1 Miami Doll uh, Hurricanes. The Dorsey Jameis Winston comparisons not one. No, we were saying about Jernigan. Yeah. Oh, I know you're talking about Jernigan hitting, <laughs> but I'm talking about a quarterback comparison between the two. Dor Dorsey, That's a really was, good offensive lineman on Miami team. Dorsey gets a lot of credit for being able to, and Dorsey ha ha was a good quarterback. Not knocking him at all, he was a very good quarterback. But when you have Andre Johnson, you have a young Roscoe Parrish, you have uh, Clinton Portis in the backfield, you have, like, like James said, an amazing offensive line. Was you Reggie really, Wayne on that team? Uh, no, he graduated in 2000. He was after the 2000 team. Uh, but when you have those guys out there, you literally just have to get the ball to to Andre Johnson. Andre Johnson's going to run the other 60 yards. So I think Ken Dorsey gets a lot of credit for a lot of the work that the rest of the offense did around him. He had a solid offense. I'm going to say that, again, I'm not going to take a deep dive because I typically like to to put my name on any kind of ranking I give. But off the top of my head, I think Miami's got a more impressive roster. Florida State had a more impressive season. Uh, but does Miami have a more impressive roster because of what they did that season at Miami or what they've done in the NFL? Uh, no, that's a great that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they become different players yeah. to a certain extent after they move on. Like you can't. I'm sorry, Sean Taylor. I think was great in Washington. He was great towards later years in the '03 season at Miami. Sean Taylor didn't do anything at one season. So if you're going to sit there and say, "Oh, we had all these great guys who went on to the NFL like a Sean Taylor," you can't give him credit for '01 because he was riding the bench in '01 for a majority of the '01 season. He wasn't playing. Well, Brian, man, he had right a guy. great, he had a great safety at Ed Reed. Like an amazing Absolutely. Right. But that's what but that's what I say. Miami fans like to talk about that. Oh, we had all these guys. You had you had Kellen Winslow. They love to use the Kellen Winslow argument. Oh, Kellen Winslow was on the bench. Sean Taylor was on the bench. Yeah, these guys played great later on at Miami and they had these yeah. had, Oh, one they went had, to who's the tight end? The tight end that played that got drafted, Jeremy Shockey, if I remember correctly, right? He was sure. Jeremy was Shockey he, was before that. He was still and there. Bubba and Bubba was there before Jeremy. Oh, um, but like you, like again, it's a it's a thing where again I get I get the trolling stuff people. But I, I have respect for the rivalry for the University of Miami because I almost went to the University of Miami and they had some cats. But you know I just you know think the way they did. But Sean Taylor was was that guy. Sean Taylor when he played, but he wasn't on. He, you're right though. He was not a key contributor. It's like saying it's like when they, when people here in Jacksonville say Tim Tebow was the quarterback for two national championship teams. Tim Tebow was the quarterback for one national championship team. Chris Leak was the quarterback for that mm -hmm. first national championship. You give respect and credit to who who earned it um, that way. So, but yeah. But there is, there is an argument that you could say y you give that roster credit because if they had injuries, then a whomever were saying Kellen Winslow would 
fill in for Jeremy Shockey, and that speaks to the great depth of that and talent of that roster. Agreed, but you can't give Sean Taylor what Sean Taylor did in 2003 when he was no, a no, 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 true, absolutely. You can't. And that's one of the reasons goal. why I tell people it's ridiculous to compare NFL teams and college football teams when that that argument comes up that people make. Oh, this uh, Alabama team could beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, no, these these players aren't what they're going to become when they're 25 years old. They're different guys. Before we go this week, Logan, we have a quick question for you. Earlier, I think a couple of weeks ago, you posted that you were going to pay more attention to pro hockey this season, to the NHL. Have you done that at all? Oh my I God. have not watched a Penguins game yet, sadly. I can't do hockey. I, I thought I could try it, but I can't do it because the fans aren't there, and that's what I think makes hockey so much better, honestly. For definitely a newcomer coming in, I – I got to have fans there in order to have the big old horn go off and the like shotgun a beer for a goal. But I am a big, I am, I definitely, when it comes to the playoffs and stuff, I keep up with the pens and pull for them. I just, I try it. I just can't that, do it. Yeah. Because you want to make a Sookie Penguins team growing up? No, oh. no, I just thought, you know what? If I'm rooting for the Steelers, I might as well go for the Penguins. But then if I need, I love San Francisco, so if I go for the Giants. Um, I go with the Sharks. Shark, sharks are good. Sharks are good. Too. Sharks aren't too bad. Yeah, Sharks aren't too bad. But I decided to go to the Steeler route and, uh, so I can keep on waving my towel. I say this I've only been to Lightning games, so I'm yeah. a Lightning fan. I've been okay. to three Lightning games in my life, and they're all, they're even... all awesome. Dude, I will, it's I will. just like it, it's it's amazing. I, it's the best. It's the best sporting experience. One is air conditioning. Right. Two, they have eighteen minute breaks where you can go watch football. And uh, yeah, go so, grab like so that, more food. that. It was just great. Like when I was like, "Are you gonna make me sit here and miss football?" But then I was able to go and and watch mm-hmm. the game and catch up, and then come back and watch. And then fight. I like fights. It's awesome. I, I think will. every sport should have that organized fighting thing. And I think it would make the sport so much better if they just let them get that tension out. You got to go sit in your penalty box or whatever you got to do for a little bit of time. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, NFL, college, it's just, it'll add just – so, like, my man, um, uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, who obviously has a punchable face because everybody likes punching him. Like, if they would have just let my man Wims from Jacksonville – Go ahead and get his two minutes that that he need that he felt he needed with people around. Make sure they get out of hand. It would be so much better. I will say this, Logan. This is my advice to you. This is friendly advice to you. As a longtime New York Rangers fan, don't root for the Rangers. Don't don't put that sorrow in your life. You don't need that sorrow in your life. You're still upset about the Steelers losing to the Browns. Don't add more pro sports <laughs> sorrow in your life. No, I plan on not doing pulling for any New York teams. It doesn't ever seem like a good idea. Hey, hey, hey. Right. hey. I got to get ready to get ready to do radio. So I'll see y'all next yeah. week. Thanks, Thanks James. Adios, James. Adios, James. Be good. Yep. See you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, before we sign off, would love to give uh, double recognition here one more time to Daniel Bremer. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, Ronan, of course, BGPO Football Funk, TFJ Boxing, and most recently here, Lazarus lives times three for the super chats. It must be something magical about Jason's overtime, or maybe when when <laughs> when we get into a debate that brings out all the super chats. If I think it does work. If so. only Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, would get us a sponsor. Tim <laughs> Live Trade, only he would actually get us a sponsor. <laughs> somebody right. will come. Somebody contact him. What's what's your email? Mark Rogers TV at gmail.com. That's it. Contact him. Somebody sponsor this damn show. Easy Come to on. remember. Come on. on. Get that. Get your together, people. No game day is too cheap to sponsor it. So somebody sponsor this damn show. I know. We are cheap. Well, I am cheap. I'm a cheap right. bastard. I mean, you, don't you charge for your Discord? Yeah. Got Let's, in get order to speak to it. Let's get some folks over to Noel Game Day. What's going on over there this week? Oh, man, the, the, the shows we're doing, the last two shows. The last show we hit our all-time record for live viewers. That was crazy. I, I don't know what's happening, but um, we're doing our show called Hear the Spear. We don't really know what we're doing until about 15 minutes before we go live, but I think that's the best part about it. It's all organic, and we conversate, and we're all friends. So uh, We'll have to try that sometime. So, uh, yeah, yeah, just kind of get on and just shoot the yeah. stuff. Too, too much planning. Here. Yeah. I have- and. Go ahead. I was going to say, I have a feeling like in the next couple of weeks, we're going to use up our basketball time. 
we're starting most likely it's going yeah basketball there's a lot of basketball to talk about but talking transfers that's on here the spear that's on itunes google play youtube like all that kind of jazz we also go live at 8 30 on thursday nights so if you guys want to hang out there and um we're trying to uh, we just built a content team so our instagram if you want to follow that and twitter and all that kind of stuff we're trying to amp that up this off season because it's been we didn't do so well last year so we got to amp things up so that's practically it just kind of enjoying life you know making content that's the best part about the off season ronan thank you for the compliment we appreciate it um, do you still exploit the two pretty girls yeah, they're still they're, they actually just recorded their la their latest podcast last night. So oh. they're uploading one, I believe, on Friday for everybody. Oh. Listen, if you have any drama, any advice, any kind of college life stuff going on and sports, they put in there too. Um, and they add in Florida State sports in there somehow with their dramatic their uh, I was going to say dramatic lives, but that's practically what it is. It's a lot of drama. Do, do you bring any of the drama to that or not? No, I'm not. I, I stay away. They're definitely close friends, but I, I steer away from that. I can't do all that kind of stuff. Where I'd go crazy. You give me the most drama, Jason, every Wednesday. I have the most drama. This is it every you're, Wednesday. You're like the younger brother that I'm pretty sure my parents left at a firehouse. That that could have been it, and that's why there's always argument, arguing going on. But, yeah, no, uh, just the show, man. I, if ever, anybody else wants to listen to more FSU stuff, it's called yeah. Hear the Spear. And it's everywhere, I guess, you can find on podcasts, I guess. But definitely appreciate all of our listeners hanging out with us. It's been crazy. And once again, mm -hmm. made a one hour and 11 minutes of content out of Jersey numbers. It started off that way, see? That's you have to start somewhere. Then it just grows. It just expands. It just... Uh, in, the words of the late, from there. in the words of my late high school football coach, we made chicken salad out of chicken you know what. <laughs> that's a great ending i think boys always appreciated these are the guys right here jason parker nbc6 logan rods robinson catch him on Noel game day and we will see all of you for show number 90 next week show 90 Woo, man